Hope you guys are ready for chapter two, Racing in the Rain, My Life as a Dog. He picked me out of a pile of puppies, a tangled, rolling mass of paws and ears and tails. <clears throat> we were behind a barn in a smelly field near a town in eastern Washington called Spangle. I don't remember much about where I came from, but I remember my mother. She was a big Labrador who would walk slowly across the yard as my litter mates and I chased after her. Honestly, our mother didn't seem to like us much, and she was fairly indifferent to whether we ate or starved. She seemed relieved whenever one of us left, one fewer yipping puppy tracking her down to drain her of her milk. I never knew my father. The people on the farm told Denny that he was a shepherd poodle mix, but I don't believe it. I never saw a dog that looked like that on the farm. The lady was nice, but the alpha man, the guy in charge, was mean. He would look at you in the eyes and lie, even if telling the truth was just as easy. He went on at length about the differences in intelligence of dog breeds. He firmly believed that shepherds and poodles were the smart ones, but the Labradors were more gentle. Therefore, a puppy would be more desirable and more valuable if it was a mix of these breeds all a bunch of junk. Everyone knows that shepherds and poodles aren't especially smart. They're responders and reactors, not independent thinkers. Especially the blue-eyed sheepdogs from down under, Australia, that people make such a fuss over when they catch a frisbee. Sure, they're clever and quick, but they don't think outside the box. They're all about con convention. I'm sure my father was a terrier because terriers are problem solvers. They'll do what you tell them, but only if it happens to be in line with what they wanted to do anyway. There was a terrier like that on the farm, an Airedale, big and brown black and tough. No one messed with him. He didn't stay with us in the gated field behind the house. He stayed in the barn down the hill by the creek where the men went to fix their tractors. But sometimes he would come up the hill and when he did, everyone steered clear. Word in the field was he was a fighting dog. The alpha man kept separate because he'd kill a dog for sniffing in his direction. He'd rip the fur from a dog's neck because of a lazy glance. And when a female dog was in heat, he would mate with her and go about his business without a thought about who was watching or who cared. I've often wondered if he's in fact my father. I have his brownish black coloring and my coat is slightly wiry. And people frequently comment that I must be part terrier. I like to think I am. I remember the heat on the day I left the farm. Every day was hot and spangle, and I thought the world was just a hot place because I never knew what cold was about. I'd never seen rain, didn't know much about water. Water was the stuff in the buckets that the older dogs drank, and it was the stuff the alpha man sprayed out of the hose and into the faces of dogs who might want to pick a fight. But the day Denny arrived was exceptionally hot. My litter mates and I were tussling around like we always did. And a hand reached into the pile and suddenly I was dangling high in the air. This one, a man said. It was my first glimpse of the rest of my life. He was slender with long and lean muscles. Not a large man, but strong. He had keen, icy blue eyes. His choppy hair and short, scruffy beard were dark and wiry, like an Irish terrier. The pick of the litter, the lady said. She was nice. I always liked it when she cuddled us in her soft lap. The sweetest, the best. We kept, we were thinking, a keeping him, the alpha man said, stepping up with the big boots caked with mud from the creek where he was patching a fence. That was the line he always used. Heck, I was a pup only a dozen weeks old, and I'd already heard that line a bunch of times. He used he used it to get more money. Will you let him go? For a price, the alpha man said, squinting at the sky, bleached a pale blue by the sun. For a price. Chapter 3 will be tomorrow. I hope you guys are doing well. Getting out in your backyard, uh, getting some sun, getting some exercise. Um, you guys stay safe, wash your hands, drink plenty of water, and we will look to read chapter three tomorrow. Love y'all. Bye.